Welcome back to Boys, Girls, and Storytelling in Movies. In case you forgot, my name is Annabeth, and this is Lesson 2. In today's lesson, you'll learn about how stories and movies are alike, and then you'll practice using your own storytelling skills. You'll also get to think about what we talked about in Lesson 1 while you get creative. Part 1. Movies are stories. So, what is a story? This is a really hard question to answer. You may think a story is something you read in a book, and that's true, but we can find stories everywhere, not just in books. When you're telling your family about your day at school, you tell stories. When you're dreaming at night, your brain makes up stories, even if they don't make a lot of sense. Stories are how we communicate with one another in a fun way. Wouldn't it be boring if your parent asked you about your day at school and you said, I learned math, science, and art. It's much more interesting to tell a story about how you didn't understand a math problem, but you tried really hard until you figured it out. Or how your best friend made a funny joke during a science lesson that almost got you in trouble. When we tell stories, we describe the actions that we took and the feelings that we felt to make what happened sound more interesting. That's why a good story is important to make a good movie. A movie would be very boring if it was just one person saying, I got kidnapped by a monster, but then I escaped. It would only last two minutes. Movies are fun for us because we get to see the actions take place and feel what the characters are feeling. Part two, stories from real life. Before anyone can make a movie, they have to think of a good story. But how do we think of good stories? Well, good stories start with good characters. You've already started to create a cool new character, but to really understand what your character might do or feel, you might need a little inspiration. I'm going to show you a video about the cartoon Steven Universe. In the video, the creator, Rebecca Sugar, will tell you about how she comes up with ideas. In deciding what qualities a character will have, I think a lot of my characters are based on friends of mine. That would explain a lot. I think Steven is probably the biggest example because Steven is my younger brother, Steven, especially at a certain age when we were both, when we were both younger. Hey, what are you guys talking about? If you want to create a character that people will love, you need to be in touch with the things that you love in people and to bring that into your characters. All right, guys, now that we understand what makes a good story, we're going to write a story of our own. I have Annika back with me, and we're going to use our character from the last lesson to think of a brand new story. So just to remind you, this is the character we made at the last lesson. Her name is Sage. She's a good sport. She's a runner. She's athletic. She's nice to others. She likes to play the ukulele. She's pretty cool. She's got that cool curly blue hair. Um, so now that we remember Sage, we are going to... All right, now we're going to write our own story with Sage. So basically, we're going to imagine that we get to write any, sto any movie or any story that we want with Sage. Um, and if you'll remember, a good story focuses on feelings and actions. Um, and that's what makes it interesting. We get to see our characters do things. We get to see how they're feeling. Um, but we also can be inspired by our own lives, which is what makes the story really good. You take something that you see in real life and you imagine something different. All right. So let's start our story with Sage. Okay. Once upon a time, as every good story yeah. starts, what do you think? Um, Sage was going for a run outside. All right, she's running outside. And she sees a stray dog. Oh no. Wandering around, it doesn't have its owner. How does that make her feel? She feels bad for the dog. She does, because she's nice. Yeah. So what does she do? So, she stops running so that she can check on the dog. Makes sense. What's wrong with the dog? It lost its owners and it's sad and it's running around looking for its owners. 
Is she going to help him? Yeah. Okay. She's needs to check its collar because she sees it has its collar on. All right. And she sees that the dog lives nearby to where she is. All right. Does the dog have a name? The dog's name was Oliver. Perfect. <laughs> That's really interesting because my cat's name is Oliver. Right. <laughs> yeah, so Aww. it's, you know, one of those little fun things. Yes. So I think that she goes with Oliver to that house that's on his, on his collar. Okay. And his owners are there and they thank her for bringing him back. Well, here's what might be interesting. You might expect that she brought him back and she's happy because she got to help him, but I bet when she leaves the house, she's kind of sad because, yeah. you know, she met a new cute dog and then she has to tell him goodbye. Yeah. I know that that's happened to me before. I found a lost animal and, you know, you get kind of attached to it and you know you have to do the right thing, yeah. but it's still sad to say goodbye. Yeah. So I bet Sage would feel sad. Yeah. But then what if the owners ran out to her and they said, Oliver has a lot of energy. He needs somebody to run with. What if you ran with Oliver every day? That's really cool. Yeah. That way they're both kind of helping each other out. Yeah. So I'm going to guess that Sage says yes. Yes. So All Sage right. Says yes. Do you ever run with a buddy? Yes. Does that make it better? Yes. I it bet. Does. It yeah. makes it less um, lonely. Cool. This is a really great story because it has a beginning. We have Sage, you know, she's running outside and, you know, she sees a stray dog and that's what kind of makes the mm -hmm. story start. And then in the middle, you know, she's sad and the dog is sad and they kind of have to go on a journey to find his house and she gets to his house and it's almost a happy ending, but Sage is still a little sad. And then she gets a real happy ending yes. because her, her and Oliver still get to be friends and hang out. Um, and what makes that really interesting is that we get to see lots of action and we also know how Sage feels. Yeah. You know, she's sad for the dog and then she's happy that he's with his owner and then she's sad again and then she's happy that they get to be friends. It'd be really boring if we just said Sage found a dog, took him home, and then they ran together. Like, yeah. that's, that's not a good story. You need the emotion. You do. We came up with a really great story using our character from last time and what we learned today. We focused on actions and feelings and used our real life to come up with ideas. So now you're going to get to write your own story and then we'll talk a little bit about our stories um, and how they are alike or different from movies and stories that we see every day. Thank you for writing your story with me. Thank you. I hope you've had fun talking about movies and using your imaginations. And I hope you've learned something new. Now you'll get to talk about what you've learned with your parent at home but your storytelling doesn't have to end here. As Rebecca Sugar says, I wanna encourage you all to keep making stuff, make tons of art, make tons of characters, uh, keep learning new tools, keep trying and experimenting with new things, keep collaborating with each other, keep being inspired and inspiring each other. Uh, when you make stuff, show it to your friends, show it to your family, keep working on making it better and better. Uh, keep up the great work. There is no one who can tell the same stories you can.